afternoon adventures. Rogues are a thing. Let's talk about it. Um, but recently, there's been some talk about the assassin in particular, who specializes in infiltrating, sort of long term, ingratiating itself with the local population, the royal court, pretty much whoever they want uh, is the idea, and getting in and really placing themselves to affect some change. Uh, and they do that mostly through their ninth and 13th level abilities, or they're supposed to, but they don't really work the way they're written very well. And let's talk about that. So at level 9, an assassin gets the infiltration expertise feature. Basically, they can create a false identity for themselves backed up with paperwork, and when you do that, other creatures will perceive you as this other persona that you've created. Now, some of the discussion that I've seen about this is that this could be done with a disguise kit and a forgery kit and some time and probably some rolls. And I'll touch on that more in a bit, but in a nutshell, it's baked into the assassin class, subclass. Uh, and I just wanted to point that part out. Uh, the other one is level 13, the imposter feature. You can unerringly mimic another person's speech, writing, and behavior, but you have to spend an hour studying each of these things, which seems pretty prohibitive to me. Uh, a lot of the rogues I've met would spend those three hours just killing a person, or, you know, otherwise working against whatever whatever this person that they would be mimicking would be trying to do. So again, imposter can kind of be done with something like a disguise kit, maybe, although if a person looks really distinct, like if you're trying to mimic a lizard folk chief, I don't know. Uh, that might be pretty difficult, just because their mannerisms are so very different. Um, and of course, there's always magic like Disguise Self and Alter Self, if applicable, and similar things to make these things easier. So having it hard-coded in as a subclass feature is not really necessary. I do agree with that. What am I trying to say? With both of these features combined, an assassin rogue can technically do these things, like uh, setting themselves up as a chef or artisan of some kind and infiltrating the staff of a palace, and then learning to mimic the king's speech and writing, and maybe sneaking out late at night, getting into the king's chambers. Let me back up. They can ingratiate themselves with the castle staff and learn to mimic really everybody's uh, speech, writing, etc. And they can do this without checks. They can just do it. And then, and then, they can go late at night, probably, to the king's quarters and, uh, you know, sneak in there with some stealth checks and whatnot. And maybe write uh, one last edict for the king to issue before he dies. And then use their other assassin abilities to murder him violently. Which that would all be something that would be played with roles and combat, uh, however short it might be. And that's something that an assassin could uniquely do. Well, not uniquely do, but it's something an assassin could do better than other characters 
So really, the core of my point is that with these two features combined, an assassin rogue could infiltrate a faction, a uh, kingdom, a uh, bandit encampment, whatever the case may be, and do whatever it is they need to do, whether it's forging documents, uh, espionage stuff, or assassinating a key target. An assassin can do that better than anyone else because they can do the groundwork for it, they can get in there without having to roll anything, uh, assuming it's run as written. So there is that. However, how valuable that is in an actual game is what's going to vary a lot. Actually, it's probably not going to vary that much because it's probably not going to be that useful because while the rogue is doing this there's usually going to be four, five, six other players doing what exactly? Milling about town? Buying supplies? doesn't usually take them seven days plus actual infiltration time. Now the other two features, the more useful ones, assassinate and death strike, are very much combat abilities and like most classes combat abilities these will come up pretty often. Assassinate I have used uh, often every battle basically. It's really just you have advantage on your attacks against a creature who hasn't acted in the combat yet. That's really good. Advantage is really good. Advantage will give you your sneak attack. Can't complain. The other part of it, and the effect of Death Strike at level 17, both hinge on surprising your enemy. Now what surprising your enemy means is that you and everyone you're with have succeeded on a stealth check to avoid being noticed by enemies. If the enemies notice a threat, they aren't surprised. Some DMs run this as a group check where as long as half of your team succeeds on the roll, uh, you're golden, but other DMs, myself included in most situations, will run it where if even one person fails, you know, they step on a twig or they knock something over, they stub their toe, whatever the case may be, the enemy notices their presence and aren't surprised. So, surprise doesn't happen that often, and really that's not such a bad thing because the enemies being surprised is a massive, massive advantage for the players. Being able to have a full round where they can run in, do a bunch of damage, uh, you know, spellcasters can lay down control spells if they want to, all of that kind of stuff is, uh, without the enemies being able to reciprocate, is absolutely huge. So, of course it's not going to happen all the time. But that means the assassin isn't going to play with their fun toys all the time. So here's really the crux of what I'm trying to get to in this video. The rogue... The assassin rogue is at its best when it's by itself. Their stuff depends on infiltrating, being sneaky, being, you know, posing as someone else, or even just surprising an enemy, getting the drop on somebody, ambushing them, and knocking them out immediately. You can get huge damage with an automatic crit from assassinate and death strike if you uh, surprise an enemy. Just looking at the sneak attack alone at level 17, you get 9d6, which is doubled by the critical hit to 18d6. And then if the enemy fails their saving throw from Death Strike, all that damage doubles for an average of 126 on the sneak attack alone. That's without your weapon, that's without any of your modifiers, that's without magic items. That damage is massive but you have to surprise the enemy to get it. So to sum up in a sentence, being in a party makes the assassin rogue worse. And in D&D 5e, a party-oriented game, that's a problem.
Anecdotally, I was in an Adventures League game a while back with a rogue, with an assassin, who had Deathstrike. He had the level 17 feature. And he also used poisons uh, because of some stuff. And he would actually break away from the group. He would split the party to go ahead of us to sneak up without us dragging him down, really, and basically just nuke one of the enemies and then run away back to us so that we could all have a fight together. Because assassins are at their best when they're by themselves. And that's the simple truth of it. And that's why why I think they're pretty widely viewed as not one of the stronger subclasses when at least for the level 3 and level 17 features I feel like assassins should be very powerful when their features line up when they get that surprise they are very strong but what can you do you know short of playing a solo campaign I guess I would be interested to play a solo campaign at some point as an assassin. Although, or maybe be like an assassin sorcerer. No, assassin warlock. And just play as Corvo from uh, Dishonored. Ideas. Ideas. Anyway, um, shorter video this time. I think I've rambled long enough. It's a... Uh, a pretty simple thing I was trying to convey and I feel like I did that so uh, here we go thanks for watching the algorithm still doesn't know me so I would appreciate any likes and comments if you want to see more uh, please do hit that subscribe button because like I said the algorithm has no idea who I am yet and probably won't suggest the next ones to you uh, as far as I know so yeah thanks for watching happy adventuring if you're playing an assassin let me know how it's going I want to hear from you. Yeah. Peace.